Part two, Bruce Metro Burris and Torch. Let's get to some other stories right now. AEW going in, you feel pretty good about it though, overall. It's gonna I do think, well. I think this I think I think I look at them as climbing steps and say so this is another step to climb, and I think they're gonna climb this particular step. Well um, as they do that, these things add up, but um, they've got a long way to go. A long way to go. So, so that's elite wrestling right now. All, all elite wrestling, wrestling, AEW. Not just elite, all. Yeah, all yeah, exactly. All in, all out, inside out. All elite wrestling. Let's move to uh, Ashley Morero from the WWE for a few years back. One of the young ladies on TV for several years, and she died last week. We found out uh, somewhere in the week, reading this week, it was from suicide. How about that? Yeah, it's a very tragic story, and it's, um, it's a complicated story. It's hard to... I, I look at everything I've read, um, you know, the affidavit that, that, that was filed by her lawyer about um, the claims of that she had been she had been raped and, and during one of the um, one of the WWE tours, WWE tours, right, and, military tours, military tours, and, and the way the story the story the way she the way she recounted what had happened sounded credible to me sounded everything sounded credibly all the way through that but on the other hand. Um, the lawyer that she was involved with was um, sanctioned several times. And he had a series of concussion lawsuits, kind of a class action, not kind of, but a class action shoot he brought against WWE and just his tactics um, and, you know, with the judge and, and during the suit um, were not successful at all. And he was sanctioned several times for um, improper conduct and legal conduct. And so it's. It's one of those things where um, something happened. Uh, you think you would think something happened, but WWE has a, a strong defense, and they came out and said none of it happened. Um, that, that she did not. That there was not. She did not. That she never came to Vincent Man and never came and had meetings about these claims. And, and she had said that they had told they had told her that she was just not to keep her mouth shut because um, about a rape because it would cause too much damage to the military. Military, too much damage to WWE, too much damage to the relationship between um, the military and WWE. And, and, um, but she was a troubled person, and she was troubled in ways that um, ways that can relate to a rape. And you know, she was um, named in a high um, a high profile call girl rape. Um, Investigation several years ago. And, Before um, WWE? After WWE. After WWE. After, after WWE. wow. So, um, makes it even more interesting. Which more means, complicated. Which is something that, um, you know, victim of sexual abuse that, that would link to that or not link to it, but it, 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 it's, it's part of a. Part of this. So it's hard for me to like. It, it's hard for me to like say anything, make a judgment, except for 39 years old and the suicide is a terrible, terrible thing. And the, the the positive I've seen out of that, and she had friends and she wasn't a pariah or anything like that. And she was training to come back to WWE, and she'd actually even like they have documents that say that she kind of. Um, she swore mended, off that lawyer. She kind of mended she defenses, was, yeah. She, she mended defenses. Um, a lot of her peers, a lot of um, the wrestlers, Mick Foley and, and um, wrestlers, that have, the, the divas that have worked with her, um, are working together to raise money for her. She has an 18-year-old daughter. And that's the, the roughest thing is you know, suicide is the people that are left behind the family and friends having to deal with, with that. And so an 18-year-old young lady that you know, raising money for her education and Tristratus is part of it I've seen and um, just a lot of the women that worked with her and, and um, um, Maria Canales and, you know, are, are doing that independent of, of WWE so um, that's um, and maybe WWE will help with that so that, that part that's a good thing to see but it's um, it's it's a sad story, and then also not just the rape, but the um, she was she the had. concussions that she was put into the ring. Right, untrained training. girls, untrained women, those divas in the earlier yeah. days, untrained, they were taking shots they probably should have been taking, and now the ill effects show up yeah. later on. And with yeah. her, she was one that she did the vast majority of her wrestling in WWE, 
you know, uh, you know when untrained in WWE getting concussions, and so that that part, the concussion part, is serious. Is serious. And there was a um, there was kind of a movement, in, in, and I was thinking Vince Russo as part of this, but um, uh, to put untrained people into the ring, including including himself, um, both in WC, both in WWE and WCW, and have them do um, physical athletic things that ended up and people ended up getting hurt, and it was you know lawsuits about it, and, and there was all of this. So, but still, yeah, um, the concussion issue continues to be something that that is that every sports would have to deal with, and, and pro wrestling is and WWE is attempting to deal with, and, and, and they're doing with a lot better than you know, the days of or, you know the days of the NFL and Deacon Jones and just rub some dirt on it, and, and professional wrestlers you get a concussion and you go back to work the next night because you're going to get paid and you know you're not tough if you don't, and you know what's the the line between toughing out injuries and and, and working and um, and not working and no one went to bounce bounce back. Now there's a concussion protocol that's more it's much more independent of, of you know when to keep things up. But this you know this hits this hits what you do um, high school you know high school sports. It's, it's you know every every segment of, 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 of physical activity and it's um, and, and particularly in sports and it's um, it, it, it can change people's personas and you know, depression issues and all the things that can go there. And also you know, just trying to make a living after you know. After make sport. a living after yeah after yeah. sports and after you know physically for women um, and for anybody whose appearance is a big part of how they see themselves and how they make a living particularly diva divas and women doing that and getting to 39 where that's middle age for the rest of us and we you know we deal with things um, it's it's a lot it can be a lot harder emotionally so all that together. Um, Disturbing, you know, still goes disturbing people. back to the suicide rate. This is death by hanging. The overall suicide rate for wrestlers is still gone sky high over the past 25, 30 years. It's that's still too alarming. Way too alarming. It's way too alarming. Um, there has been the trend of wrestlers. I mean, there was it was an epidemic. I mean, it was real, and you were you know you were around this stuff. Everybody, and, everybody, and, and all of that. Um, yeah. Look at you know, and it has um, there has been changes in the business. And it has slowed down. What the, what the, we're not seeing the um, wrestlers dying of drug overdoses, of pill, of, of pill overdoses, and um, and what frankly was PED use denied very heavily. But um, you know, but, you know, when the autopsies were coming and, and, and um, wrestlers had enlarged hearts, there's only one, there's only one thing that enlarges your heart um, for the most part, and that's um, so, and that was. Heavy, that was steroid use, and heavy steroid use, and, and um, so that that has slowed down. Um, you don't have that, you know, whether um, what the effects are as time goes by, even at this rate of uh, bumping the body around and then um, and then having to keep the having to keep the cosmetics um, right too. It's going to be it's, it's going to be interesting, but th it has been better news. But this is this is one that. You look at and you go, um, without the PED use, but everything else, and you look at and you go, um, this, is, this seems like a callback to a, a darker time. Not a dark time, but kind of a tough time right now. Ring of Honor, what about Dalton Castle wearing out the boys, man? That's crazy, man. It's, what a transition. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. get over that. I mean, they should have used that for AEW. Should have signed him, brought the boys in, put him against Hangman Page, have him turn the boys. be the biggest moment in wrestling history because Dalton Castle just lost it at Madison Square Garden and did it again on TV on their take TV show. Saw that. I said, that's one of the best actions of the year. That's one of the best events, probably one of the best moments of wrestling this season, this wrestling, year. I'm thinking, yeah, that's kind of great in wrestling history. But, you know, one thing you got to remember, is some of these guys are signed to contracts. You know, it's, it's, it's WWE and everywhere. It's like they sign a contract, they, they make a bet that they're with, they get the best deal they can with the best company that will feature them. And Dalton Castle has certainly been featured strongly in, in, um, in Ring of Honor. And, you know, you know uh, injuries have, have slowed down his career momentum. And it just seemed like that gimmick, too, as great as that gimmick seemed to be, um, it, it's lost some steam. Where do we go from here with this gimmick? I'm not sure. Where are they going I don't, him know, next? I don't see how curious. you have a feud between the two boys. I mean, you can beat up the you can beat up the two boys, and you kind of be like, um, 
Um, Send the boys to training school. They come back larger and bigger, stronger, and they take on Dalton and a mystery partner. Yeah, that's kind of an ironic thing after what we just talked about. But um, yeah, exactly. I guess that yeah, it's like does he, do they just you know just they write, do they write them off? Are they the, the version of the Singh brothers out there to just go take bumps for for the bigger wrestlers? And that's what they were there for. You know, that was there for. And does how was Dalton Castle? Um, you know, without the flame. How does he work one on one? Yeah. You know, how does that work? And I'm not saying it can't work, and I'm not saying it might not. It might be a very very good move. I mean, it might be time for his character to um, to move on, and for the other two to move on. But it's um, it's an interesting move. I thought the dynamic with all three of those was really you know, there's a lot you could do with it, and they sure. did. And there's a lot of um, you know, there's a lot you can play with. And, and they, they should did, have called so. his contract before it came open. You know, I think maybe about January, February, his contract was opening, and he resigned recently. Maybe not back then. But he resigned recently, got him and put him on waivers, let him sit out for a while before AEW started bringing him in for the opening night, putting us Hammond Page for the boys yeah, and Charlie the boys you, go crazy. That would have been yeah, great. You, you were, would have yeah. rocked the house. Well, you that's, well, you know, I mean, having um, having some alternatives for um, stars now, you can, you know, you start doing that at you know, the fantasy booking that imagine. Yeah, and you can't put a guy like that on top. You've got those other guys that are in this company already. Those guys had to be at the top. You can't put him well, on not top. Not necessarily. Like that. I mean, if they're, if they're, you know, we'll see this, but if they're serious about their business and everything, you know, it's you know, they're not just going to put themselves on top the entire way. Right now, the, Dusty the other guys, oh, yeah, look what happened. Yeah. You, I mean, we saw it with our own eyes. I mean, if you keep yourself on top past your sales date and then you hold back everybody, and, and that can really um, that can cause a business to go right in the tubes. And Dusty Rhodes doing that was a big part of that. But I, if, if, I can't imagine um, the money behind this, um, Tony Khan. And, you know, although I can't imagine it because Jeff Jarrett had Dixie Carter in his back sure did, and her years parents. and years and years, and, and wow. he was not um, he was not cast correctly as a as a top wrestler, and that was that was one of the problems, but um, a major problem with with, with the T with TNA and, and that and that. What about much. the rest of Ring of Honor right now? How do you see Ring of Honor these days? Uh, talk about their current state as far as the company goes. In good shape, bad shape? Um, you know they've um, they've added some new. We talked about this last time. Yeah. They added you know villain enterprises and. Um, I'm definitely a, um, you know, a, a, I'm definitely a PCO guy, a fan of the act and, and Brody King, and you know, Marty Skrull's um, one of those, one of those compelling new stars. But it's, you know, no one knows what he's going to do with his contract and, and, um, and, you know, where he's going to be in a few months. But still, they're, they're there with that. Um, I, Matt Taven having the. Um, Matt Taven having the Ring of Honor Heavyweight Championship is is something that seems kind of uh, you know counterintuitive, but but it's early on. Um, how long, I wonder how long he keeps this. Can he do anything right. for the company carrying that title? I mean, I mean that's what we're, Flip we're Wilson. What, right what's, wrong, what's wrong with uh, Flip right now? Flip uh, Wilson. He, yeah. You know, Flip Wilson's doing his variety show. Yeah, Flip Wilson. Watched, Flip Gordon. You know, you Flip. The, um, you watch the reruns. All what's up with Flip these days? Is Flip he Gordon is like his comeback? You know, he got injured. Um, in front of her eyes in, um, in Concord and, and at Ring of Honor show. Crockett and then, Cup, you were there with the Crockett Cup. Crockett, oh, yeah, the Crockett Big Cup time. was good. You, I'm, I'm sorry, Andy. I well, I saw it on uh, Twitter. You were, you were posting some things. I saw yeah, a few posts on Twitter. You were one of the ones I should have hooked into that. Um, yeah. I kind of regret that. But, what um, about Flip Gordon? Like, is he healthy now or not? He's better now. Yeah, he's recovered pretty quickly from that. He, grew up, he wrestled on that show. That was his first. His, he came back in Concord, too. So um, that was good to see. And he's a guy that has a lot of... Um, he has a lot of potential, a lot, you know, a lot right there. So, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, how are those guys? 61, 60 years old, you saw them at uh, Concord yeah, Cocker Cup. that was quite the deal on them. What was that like? <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. amazing. Okay. I mean, it in was like good, eight in minutes way? in a good way. Wow. I mean, you know, you had Cornette, Jim Cornette out there, um, you know, really kind of hammering down, you know, their legacy and, and them playing with it. And, you know, the wrestlers today, like, look at Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, and, and they have a lot of respect for them. They, they you know, they had the match um, for Phoenix and Pentagon where um, you know, they got that respect, but then you had the Briscoe brothers and, and, and they're, um, you know, they're a major team. And Are they really so, chicken farmers? Do they live on a, there's a farm in New Jersey? You ever heard of a New Jersey farm? I mean, I mean, in Delaware. They're Delaware chicken. So it's a farm in I Delaware. I lived in Dover, Delaware. There's a ton You've of chicken farms. You've lived there? Farm. I did. Wow, and they're chicken farms. I, I came out down the street down here oh, a wow. week after I got out 
had a strong door when I was in Dover, Delaware. Wow. And there's, there's actually, there's the, actually farms in Delaware. Dover, on Dover Mall, right next to Dover Downs. And they um, run a chicken farm. They run, there's chicken farms I thought all this was all Dover, some Delaware. kind of a bluff. No, anymore. they run chicken farms. In fact, that's, sometimes that has to do with why they um, sign with who they sign, because they got their chicken farms to run, too. Amazing. Again, they use that word user, amazing. 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 So, um, but yeah, they did, I mean, it set up everything, and, you know, you know Morton did a Piscata right out of the ring. It was the, the classic, classic Rock and Roll Express match of, of, of you know start strong, then get cut off by the heels, and Ricky Morton takes a beating, and you know to go back to the days of front row section D. We always said nobody takes a beating like little Ricky Morton, and um, takes a beating, and then finally gets the hot tag, and and and. and and Gibson comes out and 63 years old. They were able to do enough um, athletically to, um, you know, to get the fans into it. And then something they pulled out a trick that they hadn't pulled out in years and years, and that was Ricky Morton bleeding all over the place. Mm. And so um, that um, that helped the match. But it was a really cool thing to see. Now, who won the Crockett Cup? Uh, um, 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 PCO and, and Brody King. Okay. And that was really well done too. So that was um, it was a show that was booked well. It was a show that had some some great stuff. And then um, to have Nick Aldis and Marty Marty Skrull, you know, really have a classic NWA style Jack Briscoe Dory Funk Jr. type of match. That the How fans long did that match go? It. Over 20 minutes, and they oh, even man. had Tommy Young come out and, and do the traditional, you know, you know, talk up the referee talking up how important the match was, and they did, you know, the, to, this was not. How's fighting, his health? How's wrestling. Tommy Young's health? He can walk Seems pretty to well. Seems to be fine. I mean, he That's wasn't, um, he, you know, he's in his 70s, so yeah. um, early 70s, so he's. Um, but I mean, he didn't do the refereeing of the match, but he had some spots. But he he did what he gave his speech, and um, that was that was cool to see. And of course, Camille, who was the backup. For um, Nick Aldis is um, right out of Northern High School in Durham, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and um, told me that she had her. Um, uh, we had a little discussion. She had her first fight in her high school in her high school career right there in the Jordan High School gym. Wow! So, um, which I'm, uh, uh, despite Rasheed Wallace, I'm a, a proud um, alumni of. So I, I, I wish Rasheed the best. I kind of have to. But I, it's kind of amazing that my most hated Carolina players now the coach at my old high school. So um, I guess it's all about uh, comes around, goes around, right? It's a full circle. Yeah. It's amazing. One more Ring of Honor thing, then we'll break and come yes. back with some final things. What about uh, Kenny King? How is his vision? I know he's been struggling a lot lately. Kenny King, yeah, Ring of Honor, I, is he doing okay? I, he's doing all right. I did you see the show last week? I did not. When so. he came out with the glasses on, he supposed no, to have been blinded not. by some kind of crazy disease, and he came out and uh, made the big attack at the end. Went after Jay well, Lee. Then I, guess his, I, I missed that. I hadn't heard that his eyes oh, were bad, and so then that sounds familiar to me. That sounds like um, wrestling. Nice angle. Yes. Nice angle. <laughs> it sounds like wrestling. I missed that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You're okay, right? You got the glass today. You're fine. Okay. Just make sure nothing's come up here later. You might try to tax somebody here inside the sheets convenience store on Spring Garden Street. I'm not turning on Andy Durham. No way. Well, okay. We'll be back after this. Stay tuned.